look, shouldn't I, my, I guess my question is this? Maybe it's a rhetorical question. Maybe the answer is obvious, but I'll ask it anyway. Should the in a custody situation, should the default position start at 50-50, unless there's credible evidence that one of the parents is abusive? And going back to the top of the show when I gave you the de definition of parental alienation, um, it mentioned that parental alienation uh, involves psychological abuse. Wouldn't psychological abuse by the alienating parent be considered abusive? So what I'm getting at basically is this. There's credible evidence where a parent is being considered abusive, i.e. physically, emotionally, sexually, psychologically, wouldn't that be or should that not be an argument that you can make in a family court to say, listen, in this particular scenario, 50-50 custody uh, does not make sense. I'm arguing the opposite uh, scenario uh, versus the way it generally goes, well, which means, of I, course, that the alienating parent gets the custody of the, custody of the children. Well, Sean, I would say, again, we, we, and I'll set this issue aside, but you got to keep in consideration money's the key aspect here. But to address what you're saying, parent alienation, withholding a child from having an actively involved, uh, being actively involved with their other parent, is actually in the DSM-5. These people in the mental health field use the DSM as their go-to manual. And in the DSM-5, they've actually labeled uh, parent alienation as a legitimate legitimate um, form of abuse. Now, is it a form of abuse in the sense that the abused happens to be the other parent, or is it the abused being the children? Do the you, children. You the children. Specifically with the children. Now, you can get into post-traumatic stress syndrome and a lot of other things with, with the other spouse, and there's some arguments to may, be made about that. But if you start with the presumption of 50-50, it takes the fight out of it. But it also takes out and the money. <laughs> because here's the elephant in the room. When two people who have, and this is in Texas, okay, I'm going to go with, uh, we, we're a right-to-work state. Okay, you're not entitled to anything in Texas except child support. And child support is actually, uh, everybody calls it Title Four D, but it's under uh, the Welfare Code, Chapter Title 42, Chapter 7, which is Social Security. I know I'm getting off on that, but it's welfare, okay? And it would go against the majority of Texans to know that they're on welfare by taking social, uh, you know, by taking Child support. The child support. But what happens is, if you demand child support, and, and it is given, it's demanded, <clears throat> excuse me, even in instances of 50-50. We know of several. I know of several personally. But that is a form of extortion. And that's the elephant in the room is, wait a minute, if everything being equal, why is a man having to pay a woman or vice versa? Because that does happen. It's a minority of cases, but as you stated, 78% of men uh, go through the system. We're, we're, the, we're the customers, okay? Pretty much. Right. But, and that's to put it nicely, mm -hmm. but that is the technical way they look at us. But it's a form of extortion, and how do you, how do you present that to people that says, hey, we need to get your money. We're going to pick your pocket. We'll go ahead and give your kids, but you're going to pay up anyways because, you you know, my deal is, hey, why, why don't you just uh, add it on as a tax for having kids? I'd rather send it straight to Kim Paxton than send it to the feds and then send it back and all this stuff, right? Hey, Sean, the first question that you asked, when, when, and, and I agree with, with Brandon, there's just so much money to be made that that's why a lot of these conflicts are there. But you asked about the question of uh, abuse, psychological abuse and other things. But here's what happens today. You are guilty by allegation. Uh, no matter what it is, all somebody has to do is raise an allegation. And by the fact that the allegation has been raised, has been raised, you're guilty. 
doesn't make a difference if the allegation is false. It doesn't, <clears throat> you're still guilty. And what people, the, the perversity of this whole thing with, um, with parental alienation is that the people who think that they are protecting the children are actually the people who are abusing the children. Or the same thing with grandparent alienation. We need to protect our kids from the grandparents. We had a wonderful relationship. You know how hard it is for me to say as a father that my daughter is, an, is a child abuser, a grandparent, you know, because she has now destroyed that relationship. Now, I mean, Children's Protective Services had their share, but I mean, she did what she did. And now she is a child abuser. She is abusing the children in the name of protecting the children. But what I also find too is that again, you know, she's going to a church and I, she's going to a different church. I've reached out to the church. They're trying to help somewhat, but I don't think that they see, when you look at parental alienation, it is child psychological abuse, period. You've got to name it child psychological abuse. You are abusing a person. You may not be physically abusing a person, you know, but sometimes it's the psychological abuse that the scars take a much longer time to heal. But you, know, you also mentioned something about the 50-50 shared parenting. And in general, I am, I think the same thing that, you know, there should be that rebuttal of, um, you know, 50-50% 50-50 shared parenting should be the default um, assumption in a case of divorce. And the reason I would support it is a little bit different than other people. Because I actually want to see forced divorce, unilateral divorce be repealed. And as Brandon was saying that, you know, you have an incentive if you file first, if you can paint the other person as being an abuser, you have a greater chance of having the children. So, you know, and, and as Brandon said, you know, the attorney may tell you, hey, if you do this, you know, you can actually portray him or her as being violent or neglectful or whatever, and the courts will award you the children and basically take the other, the other parent and make them a visitor in the children's lives. So my, my reason for supporting the 50-50 shared parenting is that if by doing so, you may reduce the incentive for divorce. I look at it a little bit different. I think the whole thing with um, easy divorce is a bigger problem than some of these other things, and it's the root problem. But that's just the way that I look at it. So the 50-50 shared parenting um, is a good starting spot. It doesn't mean that that necessarily is the right answer, because if somebody's out there you know, beating his wife and, uh, and, and breaking and destroying the family, I'm not sure that I would give that person 50-50. Yeah. On the other hand, if, if, uh, if the mother is the one who's out having an affair and destroys the family, I don't know that she should get 50-50. Somehow we need to get rid of this idea that there's no fault involved. Uh, yeah, I want to qualify. Starting point uh, in the question I was asking was 50-50, but the qualifier basically is if there are signs of abuse in any way, shape, or form, from either parent, then you have to reevaluate what that custody arrangement should be. Right. And I, I think what ends up happening is you made a point before about um, uh, being guilty by uh, by allegation. Allegation. And, and or by perjury. By perjury. But here's the thing, and, and you know, uh, uh, Gabriel just made a comment. He says that's true. Look at my case. Um, the challenge becomes this. You know. When you live in a, in, in, a, in a world now where you look at our media um, and you look, for example, there's a campaign going on now, hashtag Me Too. Yeah. Um, while there are people who legitimately are victims of all sorts of abuse that are legitimate forms of abuse that are physical, sexual, um, emotional, uh, psychological, uh, and I'm talking about severe, not, you know, somebody told me no and I had a breakdown, so me too, right? But the problem with that is, is that when you say me too and then put somebody's name at the end of that, you're now guilty by virtue of allegations. So uh, people who legitimately were victims, the, the legitimacy of their, uh, uh, of their issue gets completely um, diluted by everyone else coming out saying, well, me too, because he told me no to the diamond ring that I really wanted. <laughs> right? So the problem becomes now that people who have real issues, no yeah. one takes them seriously because you have all these other fools running around saying me too. Well, uh, here, and men can't say me too, can we? Can we say me too? What happens if I say me too? How does hey, that look? Too, I, I can put a whole laundry list of me too's for me too. <laughs> exactly. It, it doesn't make it legitimate, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, but the point I'm making here is that you have people who take a legitimate issue. Um, 
uh, they abuse it, they reutilize it because, hey, it's getting the attention. Look at me. It makes it hard to solve an issue for people who truly are victims of all forms of abuse. Right. When you have everybody else jumping on the bandwagon, making up reasons to be on the bandwagon too because, hey, I want to get attention as well. Uh, Gabriel says, that's a good YouTube channel name. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> All I was going to say uh, what, with what Jeff is saying, look, back in, and you, meant, and you alluded to this a minute ago, back in the 60s, you had this whole revolution, men leaving the home, whatever. We'll give them that narrative that they can run with. I don't agree with it, but, I, but we'll, we'll go with it, right? So they implemented these things, and they beat up on men for years and years. Now they're coming for everybody. But with all these false allegations, it, they're rampant, but my question was, or, or my statement, if they're, if you're truly talking about an abusive situation, okay, why are why are you giving any access to this person? If you if you're if if a person is actually sexually abusing a, a child mentally, I, I mean, if you're if there's actual abuse going on, why do they have any access whatsoever? From 1960. Maybe dads didn't want to be involved in their kids' lives. They, they just left. They left the home, never looked back. But what we're running into today is there are a lot of men who want to be involved in their children's lives, and they have this every they they have everything against them because of money, which you know which perpetrates the whole system. But. Um, you know the mothers are guilty too, and I—I I mean, I've—I know Gabriel said, "Oh, don't blame the mother," <laughs> or maybe not him, it was other people. Oh, it's, you know, it's not—you can't go against the mom. That's talking bad about them. No, these women. When you look at the law, it says the minimum. The minimum is four days a month, two hours a week. It's not the maximum you can give your children. They are being spoiled little brats in carrying out what they do. What do you think her rationale for keeping it to the absolute minimum, four days a month, two hours a week? Like, what do you think the rationale is that she has for doing that? In my particular case, um, it, it's, uh, it's narcissism in my particular case. Okay, and... I don't. I mean, I don't want to get off on that topic. But when you learn about narcissists, so many issues that all stem from spoiled brats getting their way, and they have government thugs backing them up. I mean, it's that simple, right? Have basically no form of defense. And the point that uh, Jeff made earlier was basically this: uh, it's about money. And a comment that uh, Gabriel made that there is no profit. From peace, there's only profit if there's conflict. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Right. If you enjoyed the show and want to see more, join our Facebook page called The Man Cave by Gentlemen United. All of our shows, tons of additional content, and invitations to future shows are posted there. You can add to the conversation and suggest future discussion topics. Please like, comment, share, and most of all, subscribe by clicking the Gentlemen United icon. I promise it's free. Thanks again for joining us in The Man Cave. Enjoyed the show? Like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for joining us in The Man Cave.